Hello. I'd like to speak with you about desire of the heart. And I turn to Scripture to begin. In the Old Testament, in the book of Psalms, chapter 37 and verse 4. Reading from the Lamsa translation, Trust in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. Trust in the Lord, and He shall give you the desires of your heart. I think that relates a lot to what Charles Fillmore said about faith. Faith is the magnetic power that draws unto us our heart's desire from the invisible spiritual substance. There is this desire of the heart, and it is our faith that pulls it towards us with a magnetic power. And when we turn to the letter of Paul to the Philippians, we get a little bit more about this. In chapter 2, in verse 13, it says, For it is God who inspires you with the will to do the good things which you desire to do. God is the inspiration that inspires you to do the good things that you desire to do. And I think this is reflected in what Emily Cady says in Lessons in Truth. Desire of the heart is always God tapping at the door of your consciousness with his infinite supply. And I think that my calling to ministry demonstrates how desire of the heart works, because it begins with small desires that are easily discarded and ends up with a gripping upon me that just cannot be ignored. So I began to have these small inklings of this desire when I was in high school. And I can remember asking a classmate, talking to them about what it is, we were seniors, what it is we might do. And I mentioned that I might possibly be a minister. And she asked me if I had a calling. I didn't even know what a calling was. I said, no. And I discarded the idea out of hand. But my search for truth continued. All through college, all through the rest of my life, I, I kept searching for what it is that Jesus was really trying to tell us. And in this search, I discovered lessons in truth, and thereby I discovered unity. And I went to Unity Church on the Mountain for the first time. I came in the door of that church and found, while I was there, that they had no minister. I went through the classes that day, went upstairs for the workshop, and on the drive home, I thought, this just lines up perfectly with what I already believe. I've been studying this stuff all my life. I could be their minister. And I went home then, and I got online, and I looked up at unity.org to find out what it takes to be a unity minister. And I looked at all those requirements and all those SEE classes that had to be taken and found out they were each $120. And I said, no, that money's just not there. There's no way. And I put it out of my mind. But I continued to go to this church. Unity Church on the Mountain. I took part in all the discussion groups on Wednesday, Sunday morning before the service. And I went to workshops. And I continued this search for truth, and this discovery. And one day, in a, in a discussion group on lessons in truth, we were talking about faith and we came to that section about desire of the heart. And here it came back in my consciousness again, this idea of the ministry. I didn't know what it looked like, what it would look like. I thought, okay, well, I'm, I'm a musician. Maybe it's, it's a musical ministry that, that I'm being called to give. But I still didn't say yes. I didn't see it as a calling until I was at a workshop one day and we were doing these practical exercises 
We were releasing things and we did a burning bowl. We did all of these things and, and, and the emotion level was just so high and I started bringing in these fears. All of these fears started coming up around the ministry. And yet at the same time, there was an excitement. And it was all around this idea of what I would have to give up, what it would do to the people around me, and what it would do to the people around me. So in both ways. And in a tearful moment, I released the fear and, and I said yes to God. I said yes to spirit that I don't know what it looks like, but I know that it will be good and it will be okay. And I took that giant leap into the unknown and acknowledged that desire of my heart. And as, as this calling continued, I can remember talking to my minister at the time, Reverend Carol, and I didn't know what it would look like. And she said, it doesn't matter. You don't have to know what it looks like. Just ask God, what is your next step? And that's how I proceeded. I began taking these little steps as Spirit guided me. And every time I had a class, there was always the money to do it. There was the time that I could take vacation from work and go to an intensive class. All of these things were lining up to bring about this desire of the heart. And that's how I came to be where I am now. God was pulling on my heartstrings and, and that pull became greater and greater. And because I was able to say yes and step out into the unknown, the universe lined up to bring me to this moment where I'm standing before you now as a field ministerial candidate to be an ordained unity minister. And I just want to say, thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you, Spirit. Thank you.